Up to this point, the only double bond that we examine in great detail is the double bond that exists between the two carbons in our alkene molecule. So basically, we have the sigma bond that is sp2 hybridized and we also have the pi bond. Now, the pi bond is formed as a result of the overlap of two 2p two orbitals. This 2p orbital comes from this carbon and this 2p orbital comes from the second carbon. Now, because these are identical carbons, because they have the same exact electronegativity, these two 2p orbitals will be of equal energy. So if this is the energy axis, these two are found on the same exact energy level and so when they overlap they form the lower in energy and more stable pi bonding molecular orbital and also the more the higher in energy and less stable pi anti bonding molecular orbital and the two electrons where one comes from this 2p orbital and the second one comes from this 2p orbital end up in the lower in energy pi bonding molecular orbital. So let's compare the double bond that exists within our carbon-carbon system and the double bond that exists inside a group in organic chemistry known as the carbonyl group. The carbonyl group basically contains a carbon that is attached to two arbitrary groups. So this could be an H atom, it could be a methyl group, or any other type of arbitrary group. Now the other side of the carbon is attached to a double bond and the double bond is attached to our oxygen. The oxygen itself also contains two pairs of electrons. So basically the oxygen is more electronegative than our carbon and because the oxygen is more electronegative than the carbon when it gives a 2p orbital to form our pi bond the 2p orbital will be lower in energy and more stable than the 2p orbital of the carbon so in forming our pi system we combine a 2p orbital of the carbon and a 2p orbital of the oxygen that are different in energy values. If we compare in this case, they are the same because these two carbons are exactly the same. They have the same exact electronegativity value. But in this case, the two atoms are different because oxygen is more electronegative. This is lower in energy and more stable. So that basically means when they overlap to form our two orbitals, two molecular orbitals, the pi bonding molecular orbital and the pi anti bonding molecular orbital, this will be the orbital that will have those two electrons. And notice that this orbital is closer in energy to the oxygen orbital than to our carbon orbital. And that can be seen by comparing the energy difference values between these and this. This is much smaller and so that means on average the electrons will be closer to our oxygen 2p orbital than to our carbon 2p orbital. And so because oxygen is more electronegative that means our electron density will be closer to our oxygen and the oxygen will have a partial negative charge while the carbon will have a partial positive charge. And so there will be an electric dipole moment that will point from the carbon to our oxygen in this carbonyl group. And because of this, it basically makes our double bond inside the carbonyl group much more reactive than the double bond inside our alkene. So the actual orbital diagram of this carbonyl group looks something like this. So we have the carbon that is attached to two arbitrary groups. Let's designate them with the letter R. So the carbon is also attached to our oxygen via the sp2 hybridized bond. So this bond here is sp2 hybridized. The carbon contains its 2p orbital and the oxygen also contains its 2p 
orbital. And because this 2p orbital will be lower in energy than this 2p orbital, our actual pi bonding molecular system, this pi bonding molecular system, will resemble our 2p oxygen than the 2p carbon. So it will resemble the 2p oxygen more than our 2p carbon. And so that means the electrons will be closer to our oxygen forming a partial negative on the oxygen and a partial positive on that carbon. Now, another way to visualize the fact that there is this separation of charge between the carbon and the oxygen is by realizing that our carbonyl group is resonance stabilized. There are two major Lewis dot structures that describe the structure of our carbonyl group. So basically, we have this structure that we spoke about earlier, but if this pi bond breaks off and goes on to our oxygen, we form this second Lewis dot structure, the second resonance stabilized structure on which we have a full positive charge on the carbon and a full negative charge on our oxygen. Now, the, uh, the actual diagram, the actual structure that describes our carbonyl group is somewhere in between these two structures. And that means the carbon will have some type of partial positive charge and the oxygen will have some type of partial negative charge. So basically we see that because the oxygen is more electronegative than the carbon, it will pull the electrons closer to that oxygen than that carbon. And that means the carbonyl double bond is slightly shorter and slightly stronger than the alkene double bond because of this electronegative oxygen. And that basically makes our double bond inside the carbonyl more reactive than our double bond inside that alkene. And we'll discuss more about the reactivity of the carbonyl group in the next several lectures.